Always glad to have you join us on Off the Press on Plus TV Africa. I hope you're having a good morning so far. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Let's see if we can bring you up to speed on what's making the headlines in our newspapers. Uh, we have a couple of them here this morning. And I also have a guest, as usual, to help make sense of the issues raised in the papers. And he is a public commentator, Obina Igwebike. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Good morning. Good to be here. <laughs> Pleasure to have you. Yeah. All right. We'll start with uh, this day newspaper. Um, a couple of headlines. The screamer here, um, Obina is actually saying, is not the like. It's not like the main thing. But let's just uh, recap, and then he will explain why he said that. Uh, the headline today, the screamer, I hope it's on your screen soon, it's a massive shake-up in police. IG redeploys over 50 officers. It has two riders. There you have it on your screen. Um, Tinubu's ex-CSO moves to Quara as CP. Uh, PDP protest says APC wants to oust Saraki at all costs. Remember, the guy that's gone to Quara was at some point brought here to Lagos. I guess that's why it's uh, in the news. And then just below the masthead, this day newspaper, you will see a budget pledges to spend 50% of Lagos' budget on education. Details of that story is on page eight. There you go. And then at the very top of the paper, you have assets in CBN's National Collateral Registry hits 1.561 trillion naira. And underneath it, NDLEA impounded drugs at MMIA increased by 400%. So there's more on a bit of politics. If we go a little bit down, you will see the story on Buhari promises to reinvest recovered loot in infrastructure just beside the picture of um, uh, expanding banking frontiers some uh, the CBN people all of them right there Tony Elumelu is also in that picture if you can see their faces properly okay uh, let's flip quickly to the back page this day we'll have the choice before Nigeria one that's it. The picture of Yakubu, the INEC boss, is there. Why is that picture there? You will have to read the story in order for you to get the details of that. Sustaining the Jonathan legacy. That's another piece there. And the humbling feedback. These are some of the headlines on this day newspaper. So let's bring in our uh, guest this morning. Obina, you were telling me just before we came on that this is like the most important news today. The NDLEA impounded drugs at MM. IA increased by 400%. Could you explain a bit? Yeah, I think that's a big news item. Um, another very big news item is the news on the National Collateral Registry. Now, for the drugs impounded, I mean, I was at an event yesterday and someone was talking about, you know, the whole US-Mexico crisis, the crisis in the southern border. Um, the truth is, the more the US shuts its borders to not just Mexico, right? Because uh, Me Mexico is really just a gateway to drug movements around Latin America. The more they will likely look for opportunities in other parts of the world. So it might not be unconnected to, you know, the crackdown in the U.S. southern border. The fact that you know drugs like these are finding Find routes in other parts yeah. of the world. So I think it's something that, as a as a government, we should be very careful. Already we have a drugs crisis in most parts of Nigeria. I mean, it may not be hard narcotics, but we've had to deal with things like codeine yeah, and, tramadol. and tramadol and all that. So there's already some kind of demand in the market. Um, obviously, you don't want to give people like that access to you know, harder substances. So, I mean, whether it's immigration, you know, whether it's customs, you know, the border patrol and border securities, both land and, uh, you know, borders around the country and then also in the airports. Now, another very big news item, item, and I'm kind of surprised that not too many newspapers are leading with this. You know, the story of the National Collateral Registry. Of course, we know that SMEs in Nigeria have traditionally struggled with getting bank finance. And one of the reasons for that is obviously the lack of collateral, you know, the, the, the inability to provide collateral. Um, now, what the government did was to put in place this law that allowed movable assets. So whether it was livestock, 
you know, motorcycles, keke, you know, those kind of things. If, if it's registered as an asset, it can then be used as collateral for lending. Um, I think this is progress. Um, you know, sometimes we look through newspapers in Nigeria and we wonder if we are making any progress at all. <laughs> but I think this is really, really, really good progress and the government needs to be really commended. Um, 1.56 trillion is actually a lot of money. You know, so what that means is SMEs potentially can have access to loans, plus or minus what, what, um, what the asset size they have in the collateral registry. I think that's very, very significant progress. Yeah, I think you could you just uh, chip in something on this massive headline that's looking at us. Massive shake up in police. A lot of reactions coming in. Well, I mean, I think we live in a society where people suspect every move by the government. <laughs> Especially now that it's election now that period. Elections, you know, yes. I mean, it's what, eight days away or nine days away. I don't think it's such a big deal. Um, the truth is, I mean, this is me thinking on behalf of the police. If you think, for example, that the governors have a very, very strong hold on their police commissioners and you really want independent police commissioners who can peacefully conduct or who can help in peaceful conduct of elections, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. You know, obviously there are one or two cases, the Quara CP, um, obviously. Um, I mean, it's, it, 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 it can elicit some kind of debate, but beyond that, I don't think, even for the Quara case, look, the guy, if he, he can be commissioner mm -hmm. in Lagos or anywhere else, he could, I mean, there's nothing, Quara is a state in Nigeria. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. move on to the next paper now. We have uh, a few of them, and we still have sports. Um, he's going to come in, well, Udoka is going to come in and uh, talk a bit about that as well. Vanguard seems to be going to Taraba all over the front pages and advertorial, so we're just going to ignore that and move on to uh, the one that uh, might be some news for a lot of persons, yeah? Uh, it should be on your screen any moment. The Vanguard newspaper has this one, Pose. EU tackles aerofire over body bag threats to observers. Uh, the story is on page five. There you go. It's right now on your screen. And then you have a Papa Oshodi traffic crisis. Task force members go berserk. Why? Did they do that? You would need to read. Lagos Gov poll, I'll spend 50% annual budget on education. Agbaje is also speaking here in the Vanguard. We go to the back page quickly. We have sports there. We're just going to give it the rest and wait for Doka to come join us for us to take a look um, more on sports stories. So quickly, this EU situation with Elrify. Quick thought on that before we move on. Uh, well, I, I mean... Look, we've, this is the sixth election in this cycle, in this republic. Um, we've always had observers. I, I think they are value adders to the system. I think they provide some level of accountability. Um, they may not prevent um, flood polls if we don't coordinate or conduct polls in, in, in a Credibly. fair way. Incredibly. Yeah. But I think they are useful. Um, now, the statements, well, I, I, I guess it was a bit overboard. Um, we need to be more careful. The truth is, Nigeria is the population of Nigeria is one sixth the population in Africa. Anything that comes out of Africa becomes kind of bellwether for Africa. You know, so I think that leadership position we have gives us some responsibility in how we handle things. Like we have to set the example. example yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I, I understand what he means around sovereignty and all that. Those are very legitimate claims. But I, I think we also need to be very careful in the choice of words so that we don't pass any unintended, um, we don't communicate any un, unintended thoughts. Right. Um, so I, I, I'm happy that the EU is still interested in coming to observe. I think they're useful and I, and I really think they should, um, they should be welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's also a story there around... Um, a papa should you? Yeah, I mean, the truth is, look, that's, that's a nightmare. We, we have to deal with that. Um, and I think the government has to use its might. It has the instruments of the law. I think it has to use it in dealing with that situation. All right, uh, we're going to go to the Punch newspaper now. We have a uh, picture, Justice for Gifts Alonge. That's uh, the picture story on the front page of the Punch newspaper. We're going to do that quickly now. 
yes, that was what I was referring to. Okay, we have uh, the Apapa gridlock captured also on the front page. That's the, uh, that's the front page, yeah. Justice for Gift Alonge. Underneath the picture, you have members of Brave Heart Initiative for Youth and Women during a protest for a rape victim in Benin City. That's in a dose state. All right, we have another one. Elections. PDP rejects redeployment of 37 CPs, says it's politically tinted. And then there is the rider Tinubu's ex-CSO, Egbatoku Naukwara CP. We've already tackled that. And the top master of the paper has um, El Rufai slammed for issuing death threats to foreigners. Customs intercept police uniforms, tear gas in Lagos. NLC wants minimum wage excluded from income tax. Uh, that was captured in our news earlier today. Let's do a quick flip to the back. You have, um, for those who will vote neither Buhari or Atiku, uh, I'll take that again. Uh, for those who will vote neither Buhari nor Atiku, uh, what's that about? You might want to go read it up. Uh, we do have an analyst to help us make sense of some of these headlines, though. And then there is the expression, the pictorial reportage on the back page. Uh, members of Vote Not Fight during a sensitization rally against election violence in Lagos. Quickly, Obina, which of these headlines would you want to talk, touch on? Um, I will look. So the NLC. Um, NLC's demand to take minimum wage out of um, the income tax bracket. Um, I, I, I think it's a difficult call. You know, look, we need to increase our IGR, or we need to increase our revenue outside oil. Um, coming to ask for, you know, certain people in the federal allocation or in the federal remuneration structure to be taken out of the minimum wage. I don't think that's a, that's a fair way to go about it. What you can ask for is a tax system that actually is based on what you earn. So you can say, okay, you can reduce the, 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 the rates of people like this. But I, 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 don't, I don't think it's good to actually ask for this. I think what they should ask for, or what they should put a lot of pressure on the government to do is to use our taxes more efficiently. I think that's a more um, logical well, that, way. Don't, don't you think it will reduce the money that the 30,000 naira, if you take out tax from mm. that, it's already gone close to 25? I, I give you this example. If that tax money is taken and used to build a road mm -hmm. or used to improve electricity, these people won't have to, okay, electricity is own private to, to a large extent. But if the infrastructure around the 30,000 is improved, there's less pressure on the 30,000. So this is a very short-term quick win, but I think we need a more, the reason why cost of living in Nigeria is expensive is because we have infrastructure that is very, very dated. So yes, you, you want short-term quick wins, but I think the solution is not in taking them out of the minimum, uh, out of the, out of the um, income tax, tax um, yeah. brackets, yeah. Okay, let's uh, take a quick dive to the Nation newspaper to wrap up this segment. Uh, we have a few headlines of interest. I will start with a screamer, of course. Uh, Buhari to PDP, EU, L5 spoke in national interest. Mm. It has three riders. You might want to take a look at it. It's on your screen. A uh, governor who are waiting for those seeking intervention. PDP threatens to dump peace deal. EU won't quit. Mm. Oh, I think we've touched on that already. So we'll just go to the top mast and see if there's anything new. Uh, on page eight, you will see the story. ACF, support for Atiku won't change Paul's outcome. That's uh, one for you. Aircraft requires... Air Force, rather, Air Force acquires 22 aircraft to battle insurgency. And then we have something on ERCC can't serve ex NIA chief. Lagos restricts movement. Why is that? Details is on page 41. Ajimo become these accident victims to UCH. And then Lagos, Kwara, Kogi, others get new police chiefs. And on the bottom, that's where I am now. It's on your screen, yeah, where you have the red undertone. How we killed hotelier manager by suspect. And uh, another sad case of suicide, uh, suicide rather, is captured on page five. And that's man commits suicide. May he rest in peace. Uh, the Nation on the back page has uh, something on a manual for crucial election. 
and then you also see headsmen um, reprobate youth's bloody end. Hardball is a usual feature I like to read. I urge you to go read it today. It's looking at APC Cross River and Inex Peak. Um, I, I'm, I'm drawn to the story of the governor of Warrior State um, who conveyed the, an accident victim to UCH. And that story is very uh, conspicuous on the front page of a national daily. Mm. And I just think, look, don't sell us our furniture. That's your job. I mean, if, if, if you do it, it you're, well, you're not, I mean, that's the minimum expected of you. So it's not something to be, it's not a news item, in my opinion. <laughs> it's, it's what you should do and, <laughs> and, and continue with your life. Um, again, I think there's a story about $4 billion FBI, uh, sorry, foreign direct investment. I think yes, that's yes, from I, the, I missed that on the front page yes, of the nation. I think that's from the Af um, Export Import Bank, or I, I, I think. Yeah, um, it's a $4 billion FDI, FDI coming into Africa. I don't know if that can be flashed on the screen so you can see it I, on I, the nation newspaper. Yeah, the that's a... Uh, corner of the paper. That's, that would be welcome development um, since the great recession um africa has continued especially country like nigeria we we haven't really had the kind of fdi we need obviously we know that a lot of our capital investment needs comes from you know foreign sources we don't have the stock of capital locally to fund a lot of our um, capital expansion for, for our businesses so i think that's good and um, typically what has come is foreign portfolio investments which is very speculative which is very short term which is very movable um, so I think these are stories that, again, just balancing the conversation and the narratives, these are right. actually good stories that people should read. People basically. should also read. Yeah. All right. We will take a short break. And when we come back, Doka will be joining us. Let me say thank you to him being the first thank in case he much. needs to slip out. Okay. I'm hoping he's going to stick with us for the sports segment. But stay right where you are. Off the Press continues shortly. Thank you so much for staying with us. After Press continues, Udoka joins myself and Obina to talk sports this morning. Thank you for coming in. Good morning, man. Thanks Udoka and Jocko, by the way, let me say it's formally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the trending headline in sports? We have um, complete sports. It should flash on your screen shortly. Uh, a couple of interesting headlines. Jesus winner sends City to the top. That's um, Everton 0 2 Man City. That's uh, something on the front page. There you have it. And then Balogun stars in uh, Brighton victory. victory. That's another screamer. MFM, grab away win, go round, stun pillars. That's another one. And then there is this one, Fly Eagles must beat Niger. That somebody's speaking ahead of a crucial tie. So I'm just going to let um, Udoka start things off this morning. Which of these headlines are people going to just go? I want to read this. I want to know what's going on. Yeah, well, it's all most most of the headlines are actually big big stories in the world of sports. For Jesus, uh, the winner sent City to the top of the English Premier League table. They played against um, Everton uh, yesterday at, at Goodison Park, and that game ended two 0 The first goal was scored by Laporte, a defender for Manchester City, and uh, Gabriel Jesus came in the second half and got the win. Winner, the vital winner for um, Manchester City to send them top of the table. And uh, they are on the same point with Liverpool, but they are ahead on goal difference. Well, Liverpool have a game in hand against that Bournemouth, while Manchester City have a tough task to defeat Chelsea to remain on top of the table. If Liverpool get to win Bournemouth, Liverpool goes back to the top of the EPL stand. And it's, cr it's quite crazy in England. And for Messi, failing to lift Barca, before that game against um, Real Madrid, he was actually injured in a clash uh, earlier in the La Liga. And it was a doubt for that game against Real Madrid in the Copa del Rey. But that game ended 1-1. The vital goal was scored by uh, Malcolm and the second half, the equalizer for Barcelona. So we're looking forward to the second leg. If Lionel Messi will get to feature in that one. And coming back home, we can't go away from talking about the Nigerian Professional Football League for MFM, grabbing that away win. It's quite 
quite difficult in the Nigerian league to get a wave victories. So for MFM getting that one against um, go around, I mean, uh, in, in the M uh, MPFL, it was a good one for them. And they are top of the Group A standings in the MPFL table. All right, Udok, a quick thought from you. In 30 seconds, which of these headlines would you want to? I think the, Man the Everton Man City game, I mean, I watched it. It was, it was something airy about the game. You know, it looks like Man City never got off second year. I mean, mm. they obviously had all the possession, sure. but they just couldn't, you know, the normal, efficient Man City just wasn't there. And mm -hmm. I think they probably, probably, it will, if they end up winning the league, it will be one of those games they'll look back and say, this was three points that that they actually really fought for the title, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, gentlemen, for coming in for much. Off the Press this morning. Um, Udoka and Joko are in-house sports analysts. And, of course, Obina Igwebrike. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope to see you more often. And that's it for Off the Press this morning. Thank you for watching. My name is Felicity Ezewike.